Hello there. This is a car battery charger from the 1970s and it's broken, so let's take it apart and see what's inside. Welcome to Car Spy TV. Right then, this is a Krypton battery charger, as we can see down there, specifically model number HC5. And as we can see, there's not an awful lot to it. We do have an analog gauge here with a little red needle that tells us how many amps are flowing into the battery, as well as this sliding switch just here. There it is. And you can see we slide it to the right, like so, if we're charging a 12 volt battery, or indeed back to the left, like so, if we're charging a six volt battery. So all quite simple. <laughs> Have a look at this. These are of course the crocodile clips that we use to connect the charger to the terminals of the battery. And these aren't even insulated, which does date the machine somewhat. In fact, this whole machine looks very dated indeed compared to the new one I bought to replace it. Just look at those clips in comparison, for example. Right then, let's start to take this thing apart, and it looks to me as if the top comes apart as a single piece along with both sides, that one and that one. And as you can see just there, we have a screw. Can you see that? So that needs to come undone first. And there's another screw the same on the other side. And this, I suspect, is going to be, drop the screw, the easy bit, because after this, we have some awkward looking pins, plastic pins, that need to come undone as well. And I suspect I'm gonna have to break my way in through those, but we shall see. So there are the screws, and there is one of the pins I was telling you about. And as we can see, there are four of those pins on the top of the machine, and there's one down there on the side, and there was originally one down there on the other side as well, but that's missing. Now, what I've done is I've had a sneaky look through that little gap there, just at the end of my finger, so I can see how those pins work, and as suspected, they're gonna be a little bit of a pain. Now a pin like this has a central shaft that gets pushed into a raw plug, like so. The raw plug then expands and holds the machine together. So what we're gonna do is tap the pin all the way through so the raw plug compresses and the machine will come apart, hopefully. Right, let's have a go at this first one. Cross your fingers. Okay, well, the pin has fallen into the charger, so hopefully now we can just flick out this raw plug part. He says with some optimism, oh, here it comes. Yeah, okay, good, right. A few more of those to go then. Right then, we should now be able to get inside. So let's open the bonnet. God, that's noisy. Oh, very noisy. <laughs> okay, well, let's shake out any remaining bits of pin which have fallen down inside the machine. There we go, I can see those on the carpet down there. Right. Interesting. So now the pins are apart, we can more easily see how they work, so there, at the end of my finger. That's the central shaft that I tapped through with that thing. And this, of course, is the piece which is more like a raw plug. See? So, how does a car battery charger like this work? Well, when it's plugged into a UK socket, something like that, about 230 volts of AC electricity, that's alternating current, flows through this big grey wire, all the way along, and then into the front of the machine, just down there, by my thumb. Now, if we follow that big grey wire inside, well, there it is, we can see that the electricity flows next into this component here, which is called a transformer. 
Now the purpose of the transformer is to reduce that 230 volts of AC electricity down to a more manageable voltage because we don't need that much power to recharge a car's battery. All right, so lower voltage electricity then leaves the transformer and it flows down the wires into this blue thing here, which is called a rectifier. The rectifier converts the AC electricity that came into the machine and through the transformer into DC electricity. DC stands for direct current, and that's what the car's battery needs to recharge. So, once the rectifier's done its thing, DC electricity flows out the front of the machine, all the way along here, all the way up to the crocodile clips, which of course you connect to the terminals on your car's battery, and then, with a bit of luck, your battery charges up and all is well with the world. Right, let's take the transformer out and have a better look. There's just a couple of screws in the bottom of the charger, and of course there is wires to disconnect. Now I was hoping, when I took the lid off this machine to see some obvious fault that I could repair, such as a disconnected wire or something like that. But alas, it seems to be something a little more serious. So I'm not going to try and source components for a 50 year old battery charger, especially when I've already bought a new one. Right, and there's a closer look at our step-down transformer. And as we can see, it's a fairly big and hefty component. Now, I'm not gonna get too geeky here, but in the most basic possible terms, electricity flows into the transformer and directly into a primary coil of insulated wire that contains lots of individual loops. That creates an electromagnetic field that electromagnetic field then transfers into this iron core. See that? The electromagnetic field then transfers from the iron core and into a secondary coil of wire, which contains far fewer loops than the primary coil, and that turns down the voltage that pops out the other end of the transformer. Now, as I said, that is the most basic possible explanation, but nonetheless, it gives you a rough idea. Right then, I've now removed a few more bits and pieces. There's a closer look at the rectifier, which is looking splendid there in blue. This of course is the little gauge with its red needle various wires, and look, we do now have a healthy collection of nuts, bolts, screws, clips and brackets, all kinds of bits and pieces down there. So the only thing left in the case itself, apart from that bracket, is this little switch on the front, but that's held in place with rivets, and I don't feel inclined to drill them out. So there we are. Now this battery charger has done incredibly well. My father bought it in the 1970s and he used it to charge cars such as the Ford Anglia, the Hillman Avenger, the Datsun Sunny, and I've had good use of it too in more recent years. So a fantastic machine, a reliable machine, but sadly it's now had its day. Thank goodness we have a new one, but I bet that won't last 50 years. So there you go, that's what's inside an old battery charger. Now, before you go, don't forget to subscribe to Car Spy TV, do me a favour and click like on this video, and I'll see you next time. I wonder what's inside this one.